I was reading this uh, article the other day in The Guardian, and... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it was saying that there should be a white privilege tax. Boo, that white people should have to pay a tax to compensate for the privilege they enjoy uh, of being white. And I was like, well, for a start, it already exists. It's called a Guardian subscription. <laughs> And then there's the suppl supplementary tax, the Marks and Spencer's food hall. <laughs> and it's all to do with reparations, and, and, but it's just not going to happen. Like, I can't even afford to pay off my ex-wife, let alone slavery. <laughs> and it's missing the point, because I don't think being white gives you special privilege. You just need to look uh, around the room at some of the people in here to realise that. And <laughs> what gives you special privilege is, is being beautiful, being pretty. That's, that's the, the special privilege. Like I'm looking at the, at the beautiful, we have the beautiful Sophie sitting here in the front row. Hey. Look at, away, there we go. But you, you know, you're so hot Sophie, you probably don't even realise that when you go to a restaurant somebody has to pay. Um, <laughs> You enjoy special privilege by being good-looking, pretty privilege. This is why David Beckham is so much more successful than, than Peter Beardsley. <laughs> and, and, like, there's, a, there's a, an American economist by the name of Daniel Hammamesh who's done a study on this, very well-respected uh, American economist, kind of like an American Liz Truss. Um, <laughs> that kind of level. And he's found that we actually imbue beautiful people with qualities they don't have. It's called the halo effect. We think beautiful people can do things that they just can't. Like I'm looking at you, Rory, very clean cut, very smartly dressed, and I immediately think you're competent and capable, <laughs> and, and, and I want to hire you um, for sex. <laughs> and, <laughs> now, if you're looking to equalise life chances through the tax system, you don't want to tax white privilege. You want to tax pretty privilege. We need a hot tax. That is what we do. And it's totally fair. Like, because statistically, beautiful people have better lives. So Kim Kardashian would pay a lot more, and my girlfriend would pay a lot less. <laughs> A lot less. And, uh, and don't go, ooh, because she doesn't exist. And, <coughs> and this tax works because it's a tax that you would be happy to pay. You get your letter through the post. You have been de deemed eligible for the 40% attractiveness tax. And you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The government have noticed I've been working out. Yeah. Tax that ass. Yeah. People would be queuing up to pay it, if only so that they can boast on social media. You know. Oh, man, this face is costing me absolutely thousands. <laughs> and all chat-up lines would totally change. People would be going, damn, girl, your tax bracket must be sky high. <laughs> A woman walks past a building site and all the scaffolders are like, get your tax return out for the lads. <laughs> but if you think about it, we get our looks from our parents. So it's kind of like an inheritance tax, really, in effect. <laughs> now, this guy, Daniel Hammamesh, he's also found out, he's also done this study, that's the American Liz Truss. He's also worked out which is the most discriminated against group in society. And does anyone know this? Is it black people? Is it, is it Muslim people? Comedians. It's comedians? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. Is it ginger people? No, you're absolutely right. It's ugly people. It's the plain, the unattractive. And he's found that ugly people are less likely to get jobs, um, and uh, not just blow jobs, actual jobs. <laughs> uh, when they do get jobs, they get paid less. And if you think about it, kind of intuitively, it makes sense. Like, when did you ever see an ugly receptionist? 
Never. Except at your GP. <laughs> and ugly people are less likely to get promoted. They're more likely to get the sack. When they do, uh, as a result of all this, they're more likely to commit crime. When they do commit crimes, they get longer sentences. So it's literally, the ugly face of crime is literally an ugly face. <laughs> and when you look at pictures of convicted felons, it's not exactly Vogue, is it? <laughs> You know, I think some of them are so ugly, the only reason they're committing the crime is for the prison sex. <laughs> That's why they're called incels. It's because they're in cells. <laughs> so ugly people are overrepresented in prisons, but they're underrepresented in the media. Like, you never see ugly people in films, you never see them on TV, except in question time. <laughs> and like Love Island is supposed to be represent diversity, but where are the mingers, babes? <laughs> and, you know, there are no campaign groups, you know, campaigning, no special campaign groups campaigning for the attractively challenged. You know, there's no LGBTQU, no, uh, <laughs> no Hollywood ugly me too. Like, everyone says the next James Bond should be black, but nobody's going, do you know what? The next James Bond should be ugly. <laughs> We need a minging James Bond, you know. 007 Pinter. And, <laughs> and the thing is, ugly people make better spies because nobody's looking at them. <laughs> and even when Hollywood is portraying somebody ugly, they get somebody hot to ugly up for the role. So, for example, Attila the Hun, famously one of the most ugly people in history, played by that I saw, a young Gerard Butler. They got, they got Charlize Theron to play the serial killer Eileen Wurinos. And if you don't know Eileen Wurinos, she's kind of, if you think like Rosemary West, but without the sex appeal, that kind of... <laughs> thing. <coughs> so, ugly people are marginalised in our society and, and they say oh it's what's on the inside that counts but do you know who says that hot people <laughs> and pop music's always taking up causes but michael jackson never sang you know we are the plain we are the ugly <laughs> elton john never sang it about the ugly bird who lived her life like a candle in the wind <laughs> ugly people do know it's christmas nobody cares <laughs> there is um, uh, Ed Sheeran. There is Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I accept that. You know, uh, what happens when a leprechaun does meth and ends up homeless? Ed Sheeran is what happens. Now, they say that politics is show business for ugly people, but looks even count in politics as well. Like, if you think of great dictators, like Stalin was really good looking when he was young. Pol Pot was pleasant enough. Even Tony Blair was fit. <laughs> you know, and do you think... <laughs> do you think Che Guevara would be on everyone's T-shirt if he looked like Diane Abbott? <laughs> che Guevara... Diane Abbott, Jeremy Corbyn's dream three-way. <laughs> but making ugly people pay less tax would turn economics on its head. Overnight, Croydon would become a tax haven. And if you think, you know, this is a bit sexist, I've got a scheme that only targets men, okay? A big dick tax. <laughs> you are taxed by the inch. You should have seen my tax bill this year. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you make a, an extra tax for big dicks. It's kind of like a poll tax. <laughs> <laughs>